Hello, everyone. Welcome to Gift of Health uh, Weekly Wellness Chat. It's a uh, Tuesday today. <laughs> oh, you remember it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we used to do this on Wednesdays. Now we moved to Tuesdays. So uh, today we are uh, uh, very excited to share uh, the the secret. Uh, it's not secret, but it's a very uh, uh, important and um, like a simple and easy way to how to grow your own microgreens. Um, not just microgreens. We're going to be sharing like you know how to grow different kinds of greens and some things at your uh, in your own house, uh, uh, and it can be done uh, without much effort. Maybe maybe half an hour to uh, forty five minutes a week. Uh, you can grow a lot of stuff within within your house. So for those of you who are meeting us for the first time, so I'm Dr. Shobha Rai Pudi, and this is Dr. Arjun Rai Pudi. And we both are lifestyle medicine doctors, and every week we share tips on how we can lead a healthy life. So today, like we are going to share like how we can grow superfoods. Sometimes, like when we go out to market to buy this, it's expensive. But you would be amazed to see like how easy it is to grow them at home. So that's why we want to just share that, like how we can grow our microgreens. And today we will see like what it all requires. And for those of you who do not know, we live in a very cold, cold place. So if we can grow it here, you can grow anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have sun, you, you can grow anywhere. So, so we thought like, uh, because a lot of people are amazed how we are growing things here, given the climate given the temperature and how we are able to grow all year long too. So what we found is this microgreens are something that you can grow on your own and you can grow them anytime, uh, uh, provided you have the right equipment and tools to grow them. And they're easy to grow. They don't take long time. So like within 10 days, you have a nice bountiful produce which you can have and enjoy and uh, this is something that you can grow again and again so we see a lot of uh, comments on uh, uh, here on facebook page uh, hi regina hi natalie hello jacqueline hi kim hello sean hi brenda uh, <laughs> good to see you uh, here like uh, let us know where you're joining us from give us a like or thumbs up or share it with your uh, friends and family members that do all of them. <laughs> you know, that's how, you know, you can spread the message and, uh, and is, uh, how are we looking and how is the audio? Is it all good? <laughs> so just hang on and we see in the background, we have many things that we want to share with you. Yeah. We will come to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what are we starting with? Like, you know, why do, why do we need to grow these things, Shabha? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So, like when it comes to uh, microgreens, uh, or even when it comes to getting maximum nutrients, uh, can you imagine uh, which foods have maximum nutrients? Because, like, we all are uh, worried about nutrition, we all want to lead a healthy life. But if you have to categorize, one group of food which has maximum nutrients, what would you think? Where do you think you can get your maximum nutrients from? Is it from the animal-based foods? Is it from the processed foods? Is it from the whole plant foods? Yes, so I see, uh, I just started using microgreens and was very interested in growing my own. That's yes, great, so Natalie, actually, excellent, yeah. yeah. So the foods that have the highest nutrients, if you put them in different food groups, the foods that have the highest nutrients are the vegetables. Of the vegetables, the, you know, if you, even in the vegetables, there are different types of vegetables, right? You have leafy greens and you have non-starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables. Which foods do you think have the most uh, nutrients among even among those vegetables. If you guessed it, greens. You know you are you are right. So the greens, like uh, these, have the highest amount of nutrients per, per calorie. Uh, the thing is, uh, being in a cold climate, like living in a place like uh, Newfoundland, we are in Newfoundland, Canada. 
uh, it is cold and uh, the sun, we, we get on, sun only for just two to two and a half uh, months. Like, I, I mean, we get sun throughout the year, but short periods of the day. The good amount of sun where we can grow stuff outside, maybe two months. Like what we are saying is our summers are very short, just two to two and a half months. But the thing is, what we found is that if we do a little bit of uh, homework, uh, just uh, 30 to 45 minutes uh, a week, we can grow stuff all year long uh, indoors as well. So that's yeah. what we want to share with you. Like and, and like when we were talking about having maximum nutrients, yes, greens. And even among greens, do you know that uh, the microgreens? And if you're wondering they, what are microgreens, mm -hmm. so microgreens are the earliest leaves, the, 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 the tiniest, the early leaves uh, which are anywhere from five, seven, 10 day old. Depending upon different microgreens, you can harvest them in five days, seven days, 10 days. Some takes up to two weeks. Yeah. And so these microgreens are amazing source of nutrients, phytonutrients, antioxidants, and you name it. So they have so much fighting capacity. They protect us from many uh, diseases and uh, this is a wonderful way yeah, well, so so here yeah. you can see like we have different microgreens so this are sunflower microgreens and here yeah. we have mustard microgreens yeah even the broccoli microgreens also look the same yeah so these are mustard microgreens and these and are peas pea like shoots. pea shoots like you, you just so we here we have three different kinds mm -hmm. uh, so and uh, we have, uh, we also have other stuff that we've been growing in the house and we'll be sharing that as well. Yeah, so, so we already showed this. Yeah, but we'll show that as well, like, because that's yeah. in a different tray. Like yes, we'll, yeah. come to, we'll come to uh, what type of trays to use, what soil to use, what mm -hmm. seeds to use. We will be answering all your questions about that. Mm -hmm. So just if you, whatever questions you have, keep typing them. Yeah. Okay. So you want to show the basil there? Yeah. So here we have a mint. This is a, like a homegrown mint. It's um, so delicious. Like, you know, the mint smells so good. And how is the basil smelling, Chava? <laughs> Like, I know uh, the whole room is smelling so nice. Yeah. So I know this has grown tall and you can see see the flowers too, yeah. and, and you can get seeds out of it. So we are letting it grow so that we can harvest the seeds too. And we did harvest the seeds a couple of uh, times, uh, and then we use them the next year as well. So, yeah. uh, the, and the basil is one thing like it's um, with just uh, one plant, you get so many seeds. Let's try this out. Yeah. And we have, so this is lettuce. So this is homegrown lettuce. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing and amazing thing about this is, this has been completely harvested once. Mm -hmm. So we completely harvested it and we left it in the in the soil and, and this did. grew back. Yeah. So it's like, it's amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. And this uh, here we have baby kale. So this is like kale seeds. So you, you're seeing different kinds of trays, right? And we'll be going over different kinds of trays as well. So this is baby kale, like we just cut this up and we use this in salads. Yeah. And this is a, a type of uh, green leafy that's uh, grown in uh, tropical countries. So uh, this is one of the favorite greens in India. Uh, it, it is called uh, Gongora in our language and it's uh, known as red sorrel. So these leaves are sour in taste and they make uh, great dishes. So you yeah. Get so what we shared actually this, uh, this one with uh, some of our friends in the Newfoundland, you know what they said, like they took, they took one leaf and they tasted it and they said, it tastes like the whole salad is in your mouth, like because it, it is so tasty. It's like, um, um, it's like uh, you have, a, you know, this, I don't think there is anything that we can compare to, but it's nice and like, you know, tasty and a little bit sour, a little bit sweet. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So Shubha, just can you hold this for a second? Mm -hmm. So this is baby kale. Yeah. So that's baby kale and this is full kale. So mm -hmm. instead of putting them in a tray, 
So we transplanted some of them and put them in pots. And uh, this is all this is all growing indoors. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> Connie says, I think I'll have to move to Newfoundland. <laughs> Connie, you don't have to move to Newfoundland. You're in Jamaica. <laughs> you can grow all of this in your outdoors. So all you need to do is just to learn how to grow them and they will grow beautifully in that hot temperature that you have. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so as, as you can see, like we can definitely grow things despite living in a temperate climate. So we thought that's what uh, it would be very nice to share with people because a lot of, uh, a lot of us are interested how we can grow. This is very special plant for us. Like this is called, um, it's a very special type of basil. It grows mainly in India. Not many uh, uh, people know about this. So this it's is actually called holy, 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 holy basil, basil or, or tulsi. tulsi. Mm -hmm. So we got seeds from India and then we planted them here in this pot. And this is, you know, it, it has been growing under the light so far and we need to thin it, right? Like, so we could get so many basil plants out of this. Like there are all tiny, tiny plants. They'll mm -hmm. become like much big. Yes. Okay. So Geraldine is saying, I love your plant behind you. What's the name of that plant? So yeah, as you can see, uh, we have like a lot of indoor plants too. Yeah. And so there's uh, one there, there's yeah. one there. Uh, the name of this indoor plant, let's see, it used to be on this. <laughs> we used to forget. Yeah. I, yeah. So I, I yeah, we, we don't remember top of our head, Geraldine. I think we have to. Uh, yeah, so we'll <laughs> look, look it up, up and tell you. But we got that from we got that from Murray's garden in Saint John's. Yeah, from Murray's garden, we saw it, and actually we have that. And plant. you know what? Uh, you can also look in Kent in Saint John's. Even Kent, they have like different indoor plants. So even that's a good place to look for uh, this kind of plants. And uh, every room in our house has at least one or two plants. Like, okay, these are not microgreens, right? But here, yeah. like we have the window here and we have this plant in the window. Can you hold this shoe? Mm -hmm. And then we have another plant, like we have this one also in the window. So any place where like a plant can stay, indoor plants, outdoor plants, like we are, mm -hmm. because plants like these, these are, uh, these are, these purify the air so much. Mm -hmm. Like even, even the indoor plants, even though they are not giving you any food or anything, still having just indoor plants, they purify the air in the uh, in that house, in that room. And research, actually, there was a study that was done in, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Delhi and it was published and it showed that when even in the workplaces where if people keep indoor plants, their productivity went by 30 to 40%. That's all the pure, uh, you know, air because, as you know, uh, plants take what we don't need and they give us what we need. You know, they take all the carbon dioxide that we exhale and they give us the oxygen that we need, right? So it's that constant exchange is always going on. So, as you can see, uh, to grow this microgreens, of course, we need the seeds, we need the trays and uh, we need the soil. So let us see uh, like what are all the things that we need and how we can uh, grow them. So we, we do have, we, we'll show you some of the things that we are using right now. And we also will show you different types of lights as well. So to grow, to grow microgreens, we are using three different types of trays. So one tray is very simple. This is just an aluminum tray. Uh, you can, it's a baking tray. You can get this uh, for a half a dollar um, for, from a dollar store. So what we do is like we get these trays in bulk and we actually make holes. So we make holes with a, with a thumbtack. Um, so yeah, so we make, we make holes so that like when we put the soil and then put the water, so it will have place to drain out. So this is one type of tray. Yeah. So this is another type of tray as, yeah. Print, yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, like it has two parts. So one is like you have that regular tray and on top of it, this one is uh, sitting. Yeah, and so as you can see, like it has holes and the water, the excess water, it uh, drains down, which is, which is a nice feature. So you, you need not worry about over watering them or uh, drenching them or killing them. So just hold on yeah. there. Like, you know, so you, if you see the same tray, 
the same, the, the similar tray, this one has soil in it. So the soil is in the top layer and you see the bottom layer. This is where the water goes, right? Let us show you a plant that, that is growing in this. Like, so Shiva, can you hold on to this? So now if you take, if you take the sunflower microgreens, so we have, yeah, you see the roots under? And here we, we, we didn't put any water there, but because like uh, we didn't want to spill it while we were moving, but this is where you in the, it, just hold the top one, okay. yeah, please, yeah. So uh, in this, we put the like water and then once you put it like this, so this is like a self watering, like you know, that water in the green tray will is good for like two to three days and you don't have to water it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, so you can get these, uh, these, these kind of uh, trays, um, these kind of trays uh, from Amazon, like these are $4 or $5 mm -hmm. um, on uh, Amazon, like you can get a pack of five. So, so we are going to share the link shortly. So we'll be sharing the links of all these things a way to get. Yeah. Uh, so and, and these, and these, is, these uh, are easy to get, right? Like yeah. from, from any dollar store or any like a, local grocery stores you can get the baking trays these are the these are the easiest ones like you don't have you don't need any fancy kind of trays you could just get started with these as well just make sure you make some holes yeah, yeah. and this is another type again like the holes have been drilled yeah we, we they didn't come with the holes but we made the holes for this one yeah so this one this tray uh, again we got it uh, from amazon this is a little bit expensive this is like a food grade quality this is it can um, uh like hold a lot of weight and um we were experimenting with different kinds of trays like a, a pack of this was about 70 dollars like uh and it, you were getting like 10 trays so each tray was costing about seven dollars whereas this tray each tray was costing about four five dollars but this is if you if you look at this two trays of this will become one white tray right so like uh for anyone starting out either this size are this size, these one of these two trays would be would be good. Yeah. And the other type is uh, the patch planter. So as you can see, like it has holes and it it is a self watering. So let's say even uh, when you're not in the house, you are away for three to four days, what you can do is you can fill the water uh, till the top and this will give you a sense like how much water is present and like so this is uh, as you can see uh, like this the, is where the water goes yeah so the water can stay inside and, and the soil goes here yes yeah, so you could So it, and, in a, in a, yeah, and then you could just fill this with the soil, plant the seeds and add the water in here. Yeah, so we use a similar planter, like we use planters like this to grow herbs like this. So we have grown basil, yeah. um, like we've grown mint mm -hmm. and uh, we also grew like cilantro. Again, these patch planters, these are available from Amazon. These uh, sometimes are hard to find like uh, the patch planters. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna share our screen and you know share some of the things about yeah, different just, kinds of. Uh, just a second. No, uh, we're, we're gonna come to that. Uh, I, I know. I just want to show the seeds. Dhanki, uh, presentation. Uh, Shivarki, yeah, planting. Yeah. So, like you can see, like we got different types of seeds, and this, like we got from the seed bank. We are going to share the link shortly. So this is uh, Ariguilla. And uh, this, uh, I know we have filled this with the mustard seeds now, but actually initially we bought the uh, organic broccoli seeds. And then uh, this are uh, sunflower seeds. So um, we're going we're gonna to actually show you how to plant these things in a, in a, in a few minutes. Yes. And so, uh, um, you want to tell like about the sunflower seeds, uh, how you got involved? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll share that. We have a, we have a nice funny story about the, the sunflower seeds. Like, uh, uh, so just hang on for that. Uh, so, uh, 
we'll be you know, sharing about uh, what kind of soil to use and how to plant them, how to grow them. Uh, we wanted to like share uh, some more uh, things that like we do typically, and um, then we'll come to uh, planting different things. So we have, we're gonna be planting some uh, mustard greens and um, some sunflower. Do you want some peas too? Yes. Yeah, we so have we have like four seeds. trays. Yeah, we yeah. brought some trays. Yeah. yeah, so we'll do that. So uh, let us share our screen. Uh, can you just uh... yeah so uh, now like we are going to share uh, like how we are growing at home so I know like you have seen the finished product like this are uh, microgreens that are that have that are fully grown so let us see uh, is so can you see can you see your screen Yes. Okay. Yes, we are able to see the screen. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Colleen. How are you? Excellent. Good, good. So let's, um, so we already, uh, we can maybe just go through them quickly. Okay. So you saw this type of uh, tray we already showed you. And um, this is a, these are um, mustards. Yeah, mustard seeds. These are like a, Two, two days after we planted them. And uh, it, like it took only two days because we have heating mat. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you what the type of heating mat that we have, but if you don't have a heating mat, then they may take three or four days. So here again, since we are growing in the cold climate, we are requiring a heating mat. No, but, but you, if you're growing indoors, you don't need a, a heating mat, but it's just that when you have a heating mat, it it sprouts, the, the seeds will sprout faster. So these are uh, sunflower microgreens uh, that are uh, three days old. So basically these, the ones that, okay, uh, we have to um, stop share, right? Like, okay. So these, these are uh, about eight days old. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and um, what you're seeing here on the screen, these are three days old. So here uh, you can see these are uh, pea shoots. Mm -hmm. So again, like this are a few days old. Yeah. yeah. And we experimented, like you see the, the first one, um, actually both of these, like they're right next to the sun, the next to the window, mm -hmm. right? Even if you don't have the grow lights, like in summertime, uh, you could probably try experimenting with this just with the window light. And here again, after they have been grown for some time, so you can see uh, how they're increasing in size. So we planted different things. So here, like this is, we also tested with barley. And wheat, yeah, 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 and, yeah, and, and wheat, yeah. yeah. So again, this are, uh, initially you saw like when they were three days old. Now like this is around like five to six days old. And you could see some of them we already cut. Like, you know, yeah. we, we, you could start harvesting them from day five, day six. Yes. And again, okay. this is how uh, the wheat grass is going. So this are like mustard greens. So this, uh, again, uh, I would say five to six days. Yeah, um, and the broccoli microgreens also, they look the same. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to say which one is broccoli, which one is mustard. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they taste great. Mm -hmm. And yeah. these are peas. Yeah. And these are harvested uh, pea microgreens. And uh, Shoba, you made uh, like a lentil stew with them, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could eat them in salads like that. You could add them to your soups and stews and anything you, any dish you make, you can add them to your sandwiches. They taste great. They, they like not just the pea microgreens, we're talking about the sunflower, um, the mustard, all these, they, they, they taste great and they, they are fresh and loaded with lots of nutrients. Yeah. So here we wanted to show in our home, we actually have a three tier uh, growing uh, set, uh, which we, this one actually we bought from Amazon and you can see it can like- no, this, is avail um, this is available at like, you know, uh, either West Seas or West Coast, West Coast Seeds. 
Um, Amazon like doesn't have them anymore. We got this uh, from um, West Coast Seats, I think. And also like it has a feature where you can adjust the size. Of, uh, so you can see the black things that are hovering on the top. So there are lights underneath them and you can- uh, You can basically alter the height of the light that the distance of the light from the plant depending upon the stage of its growth. In the in the beginning, like when the when the plants are small, you 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 need the lights closer to them. And when the when the once the plants have become a little bigger, yeah, you could move the lights away from them. So you could with this you could adjust the height of the uh, height of that light. Yeah. So here again, you can see, so here's the light beneath and you can see the trays uh, beneath them. And the, another nice feature is you can actually have water at the bottom too. So let's say if you're watering the trays, the water is uh, again, uh, sitting in this uh, black tray. So if you show here, yeah. so what we're talking about is the white tray has the, has the sprouts, like the, the microgreens, and we could put the water um, around these white trays and you don't have to water it like for two or three days then. Yeah. So Carol is saying, I have similar system from uh, Ice Valley. Oh. Uh, I also built my own wood use chains to move lights. How That's excellent. great, Carol. <laughs> Carol, like it would be great if you could share a picture of it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would love to learn uh, from you because uh, I, I've actually looked into how, how, to, we can build uh, how to build our own. And uh, also, you know, wood is uh, it's Lee Valley, okay? Lee Valley, yeah, not okay. Ice, yeah. Okay. So we all, it's it's nice to be able to build it with wood because wood is cheaper, mm -hmm. uh, and also it is available everywhere. But this one uh, is the the three tire system that we have. It is uh, a bit expensive. Yeah. But we will be showing other alternatives. Like you don't need to have this three tire system. There are smaller systems. We also have a smaller system, self-contained systems that you could start using right away. Yeah. So again, you can see like uh, different uh, uh, length and uh, uh, different times of the day. So you have uh, here, we have pea shoots. Again, here you can see we have cilantro, basil, different uh, types of things growing. And uh, this is another- So this is a different view. view where you're seeing uh, the, the, the plants, the plants haven't come, come up yet. They, you could see there are lights mm -hmm. in the middle there, are, but the, the bottom uh, we tire are, just and also the top tire. They're getting, getting them ready. Yeah, they, they, the lights are not on there. Yeah. And these are the harvested uh, sunflower and uh, pea shoots. Uh, so some, some of you, some, uh, yeah, yeah, people wonder, okay, do we have to just grow in soil? So you can also grow in coil and some people also grow on tissue paper. Some people just grow with water. So this is an example of growing stuff on a, on a coconut coil or hemp coil, like a hemp fiber or coconut fiber. You could use that uh, to, uh, so we'll, we have experimented with this as well. And we'll show you what type of, uh, um like a uh, fibers we tried and but we settled down to using soil than the than the different types of fibers so even what we realize is uh, there are a lot of nutrients in soil so yeah we, we want to utilize uh, that aspect of it because whatever we are eating we want it to be nutritious so growing on a soil yeah, we uh, thought like it's soil is more closer mm -hmm. to na natural mm -hmm. than growing stuff on fiber. And we went away from growing just in water, like hydroponic is some of the very popular, is one of the popular way to grow for many people where you're just use, growing stuff just in the water. You're adding a lot of nutrients to the water, but we were concerned that uh, all that in uh, that water is going back into the water table and all those extra chemicals and fertilizers and added to the water, uh, we, we, we felt like that the growing from soil uh, is more, new, more uh, you know, closer to the natural than growing stuff uh, from the water. And so that's, that's what we stuck with. Yeah. 
So yes, Geraldine, uh, I also grow some herbs, but love to learn more, mostly growing them outside. So as we said, uh, if you have nice uh, temperature, tropical climates, definitely you can grow them outside. And here in Newfoundland, uh, you can grow them in summer. We do grow herbs outside during summertime, but during rest of the years, we grow them indoors. Yeah. So for for us to like we'll be sharing Geraldine like uh, hang around like when the uh, when uh, June July August September comes so we'll be sharing like how uh, we you know we grow different kinds of vegetables outside. Yes. Sound good? Yeah. So again we hear. So these are actually radish microgreens, mm -hmm. and these are very tasty and they come so fast like the radish microgreens they are big leaves. And they grow fast and we love it. Like uh, just a four or five days, you can start harvesting them. Yeah. And this is again, uh, we showed you, this is the harvested uh, gongora or the red sorrel plant. Uh, and this is the holy basil. So this was in the initial phase. So you can see the small leaves. And now, uh, do you want to show, show that? Yeah. So this is how this is how now, big they have become. Now you can see how big they are. So initially they started as small leaves, and now they have grown. So if you're wondering uh, what type of lights we are using, we have uh, literally one, two, three, four, five, or six different types of light systems uh, we have experimented with. This is one type of lights that we have, like. Um, these are uh, uh, Sunblaster is one company that we are using, Sunblaster, yeah. And these are T5 uh, fluorescent lights. These, uh, you can find them on Amazon. They can uh, come in two feet and also four feet. The ones that are two feet, this is, these are two feet long. We actually have them under our kitchen cabinets. So we have basil, uh, cilantro, and parsley are growing under the kitchen cabinet. So we have these lights on a timers. So the timers, these are automatic timers. They, they come on at like, we set them to come on at like, uh, turn on at eight o'clock and then they turn off around six or seven o'clock in the evening. So they're on automatic timers. And uh, uh, so these, uh, these are very powerful lights like you, even just two lights, with the, with the uh, you could grow so at least two or three trays of microgreens. This is a tray that we already shared. Uh, this is just an example of what is possible with these trays. Like you could grow green peas, uh, radish. We, we have tried radish. We haven't tried the black beans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that we're gonna try. Like red, we tried peas and uh, uh, buckwheat also we haven't tried. Like, so this is what is possible. Like. We have tried the green peas, radish, uh, peas here, and um, okra microgreens. So, <laughs> so, but this is you know, as you can see, many things are possible. Like when you have the, 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 the trays. So this is a type of trays that we we showed you as well. Like again, we got them from Amazon, and uh, we did get this kind of coir, and we we tried growing stuff on the coir. Um, I found it; it was more. Um, more time taking, and also um, I just wanted it to be in the in the in the soil because I found like soil uh, would have more nutrients than the coir. So we went with the with the soil. This is another type of grow light system we have. It's uh, again made by Sunblaster Company. Uh, this has uh, uh, it. It comes with four trays and two lights, and. Um, Okay, so there is a question. Uh, Venkata is asking, what is the difference uh, in sprouts, eating sprouts and uh, microgreens? Well, eating sprouts and microgreens, both are uh, nutritious. Like, uh, the thing is, uh, what we found is like, okay, what can you sprout? You can sprout uh, broccoli seeds, you can sprout mustard seeds, you can uh, sprout uh, different, kind different of kinds of, of uh, yeah. So you can sprout uh, lentils, especially the green lentils. You can sprout uh, the mung beans. So you have, the, the thing is to sprout something, the, the yield, like when, we, when you sprout these many seeds, like I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second. Okay, when you sprout these many seeds, 
uh, you get when when you get the with the if you take this many seeds like a handful of seeds you might get like a this many sprouts but if you let them if you put them in the soil and nurture them for another three to five days you get these this much of uh, like green leaves do you see what i'm saying like uh, it doesn't make sense like yeah. sprouts are sprouts are equally nutritious uh, microgreens like you just for the same uh, uh, um, amount of seeds that you're using you're getting way too many uh, much more quantity of the the mic the green leaves yeah 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 that being said uh, both are good mm -hmm. so it's not that one is inferior than other so for some uh, sprouting is easier yeah so get started with sprouting but the thing is for if you if you keep sprouting you'll need a lot of seeds right but with for if you're growing microgreens you could just take few few of them and you can enjoy a lot of microgreens hope that uh, uh, helps and answers your question and the other thing with microgreens is when you're chewing them it releases nitric oxide which relaxes your blood vessels especially uh, when you want to keep your blood vessels supple you want to reverse uh, the plaques or the clogging in your arteries so it it gives a nice supply of nitric oxide when you're chewing the greens so that's another advantage of microgreens i would say mhm mm yeah. and the the microgreens they add the beauty to like pretty much whatever you add like they are beautiful as well mm -hmm. so coming back to the sun blaster uh, grow light garden system so it comes with four trays uh, you don't have to use these trays these we I, i would say like we started with these before we got that three tier uh, system we actually started with the small one but as we started growing more and more then we just went for the bigger three tier system yeah so anyone starting out this is a good good system to start with like uh, you can get this on amazon like here uh, we we grew lettuce and uh, we grow we we grew micro different kinds of microgreens in it so uh, so the question here there is a question does it increase the variety of micronutrients between two methods sprouting and microgreens to be honest priya like i don't think um i don't know i don't know to be to be exact like if if uh, if there is more nutrients in the microgreens versus sprouts but um i would say there there will be more nutrients in the microgreens than sprouts because the the microgreens are bigger size compared to sprouts sprouts are much smaller so a bigger um um uh, the, the those microgreens uh, uh would be more nutritious like they're more concentrated um hmm. you know what i'm not going to guess i'll just look it up and i'll let you know okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. uh so heather is saying i have lots of south windows will that will that give in a flight so heather heather again, where we don't know where you're living are you living in newfoundland or are you living um uh so it's if you have in a flight you can definitely experiment what might take under the lights like you know if it takes one week to get the microgreens under these lights it might take 10 days or 12 days or two weeks two weeks that. yeah so it's it so you can experiment and uh, let us know when we everything we do about this like we started as an experiment so just experiment and see okay south of quebec so mm -hmm. you can check and see uh, mm -hmm. we also have this kind of uh, grow light so the advantage we find with this kind of light is you can actually adjust the angle you can see the adjust to the angle of the light so we uh, we have grown basil under this kind of lights so the heat mat that we have uh, it looks like this so this is about 4 feet long uh, you also have a smaller uh, heat mat so you could get a heat mat that is just a uh, like a one and a half foot long so this is like a 4 foot long and uh, the advantage of this uh, this heat mat is that uh, the the sprouting process uh, when we put the um, these microgreens in the soil they they come out at least a day or two two days faster uh, and uh, you know being that we are in the cold climate we just found that this is uh, this helps yeah, yeah. um and when we use these uh, heat mats we also have them on timers so even the heat mat uh, it comes on at like 7 uh, or 8 o'clock it turns on and then 
the time uh, it will turn off at like seven or eight o'clock. So uh, you we you need the lights and the the heat mats on timers. So another type of light we have is uh, this one. This is a uh, an LED light. Um, there are many types of LED lights. Like actually, we had this light from almost four years or five years now. And when I went and if to share this with you guys, like we were looking up and see if the Amazon, if Amazon is still make, is selling them. So there's um, these are not available on Amazon, but you could look up you know, LED lights and make sure that there are good reviews um, and just experiment with it. So this is an adjustable uh, LED light, like. You could uh, adjust the height, the distance uh, of the light from the plants. So Geraldine is asking, uh, do you need this amount of growing in your house? Do you have insects like fruit flies? Every now and then we, I, I do see some, but they have never been a problem. I do see some, like rarely. Yeah, uh, but, but not. Uh, yeah, never, never been a problem, yeah. Not much to bother, I would say. Yeah. Uh, we do have uh, uh, grow tents like this, like a couple of tents. Uh, you don't have to have big tents. Uh, as we as we shared just earlier, you could just start with the sun blaster system, which has two uh, lights, or you can start with the cabinet lights as well. Uh, we do have another uh, type of uh, lighting system we have. This is a, it's a very powerful halogen. Um, this is a, a thousand watt light, like we have a tent like this. So this gives us a growing area of like 10 by 10 feet. Uh, so we have experimented, like, you know, this is not something that we recommend you start with this, this size, like, uh, but you, this is, yeah, uh, this is what is possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say the best thing is just to start small, have the trays, have the soil, have the seeds, and maybe you can have uh, that grow mat, the heating pad that would uh, help you to grow. And um, so don't worry about investing on the tents or uh, like yeah, for now different, you, different yeah, types you don't need, of, yeah. so we, we did all that experimentation, but like what we found is the most uh, uh, economical and also efficient system is just to grow th things on trays and have them under lights. So if you have lights under your kitchen cabinets, that's the most efficient. Or if you have uh, uh, other, the other thing we shared is the three tier system. That is what we found is we are using the most, even though we have this different sets of lights, that is what we are using. So, so here we have uh, two trays, like a tray of uh, baby kale and uh, a tray of uh, beet microgreens. And this, uh, we grew this uh, um, in the uh, just under that sunblast sunblast system. The 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 two feet one that we showed. Uh, let me just uh, so I'm gonna go back and bring this up. Okay, this is this is the one that we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, if you want to start with anything like a self-contained system, this is this is a good enough system to start with. Like it has it, the, these the lights here are adjustable. You can adjust them, and uh, you'll have two. You you'll uh, be able to grow two to three. Yeah, different definitely kinds. two trays. Like uh, so, you could have like a couple of these, and you start from there. Or if you can invest more, get a three-tire system, or just. Uh, if you have cabinets in the kitchen, uh, put the put these um, the lights that we uh, which ones are those like? Yeah, if you have cabinets in your uh, in your kitchen, you can even put uh, hang uh, lights like this under the kitchen counters as well. Okay, so that's the different kinds of uh, that's the different kinds of uh, um, like. Uh, uh, things that we have and we have experimented with. Now uh, we will uh, share like uh, how to how to plant these things, like uh, some basics about planting this. Yeah, Marie is asking, will this be on your page to watch it later? Yes, Marie. Like uh, this will be on the Gift of Health Facebook page, and also so we will upload it Gift on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So for those of you um, who are um, like who haven't subscribed, we highly encourage you to subscribe to Gift of Health YouTube channel. Like we have lots of uh, 
like helpful videos uh, on the Gift of Health YouTube channel. Like there's some recipe videos, some we have a ton of videos about uh, where we have gotten uh, many uh, experts and um, uh, health experts you know, sharing a lot of tips about uh, lifestyle medicine as well. Okay, so awesome. let's plant some stuff. Like I already filled some trays here mm -hmm. uh, with soil. So we're gonna uh, use uh, one of uh, this one. Like this is the... Oh yeah, you wanna talk about the seeds first, okay, before we plant, yeah. So we, we have... Okay, so we have uh, we are, we have four different types of uh, seeds here. The mustard seeds, like the they look similar to the broccoli seeds. These are pea seeds and these are arugula seeds. And this one, um, these are these are uh, sunflower seeds. So sunflower seeds, like we we were initially ordering them from seed bank, and just 250 grams of uh, sunflower seeds were about fifteen dollars. Then one day we were shopping. In Walmart. Uh, in Walmart, <laughs> in the garden area, in the garden center area. And we saw uh, a huge bag, a huge bag, like a 20 pound bag of bird food. Yeah, bird food. And it said like, it's basically black oil sunflower seeds. They're selling it as bird food. And actually these are the same seeds that I am buying uh, from, on, uh, from seed bank, like 250 grams or $15. Whereas in Walmart, like 20 pound bag, was about $20. <laughs> so we said, why don't we try these things and then see if they'll grow. Yeah. yeah. And this is the same, those are the same seeds, right? Those are the same seeds we use them, like uh, the seeds that we just showed you. And these are the microgreens from those uh, <laughs> sunflower seeds. So. Yeah. so as you can see, like you can see the seed uh, shell. So once you, like once they grow, like when you just uh, take them off, and these are so tasty. Yeah. You can just snack on them. You can see uh, the leaves uh, coming out. Yeah. yeah. I'm busy eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so this is one type of tray we can put like sunflower. So, yeah. oh, the type of soil. <laughs> so, <laughs> birds are getting a better day. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. the type of soil you can use any grow mix. Like, um, like we have a local um, uh, garden center, and uh, we got uh, huge uh, bags. Like, it's about uh, uh, if you weigh it, that's probably like thirty-five to forty pounds of uh, uh, the grow mix. Uh, it's a starter mix, seed starter mix, and you could just use that to grow microgreens. You can yeah. get it at Walmart, yeah. Kennedy Entire. Kennedy Entire. Yeah, it's just a grow, any grow mix or a starter mix will do it. So we have that, we, we put that, and then we're yeah. gonna put the- So the other thing with seeds is we don't have to soak them. Like, yeah, some people wonder like, uh, do we have to treat the seeds or do anything? So one nice thing is uh, you don't have to do anything. You're just taking the seeds and- uh, Can you put some more seeds here. So we just cover it like all the fill the gaps as well. Here, here, here. So we put the seeds mm -hmm. and uh, Okay, so we put the seeds and we put yeah. a little bit of soil on top. Yeah, so you, as you can see, like we have, uh, in the, in yeah, the, just uh, just put the, like sprinkle the seeds. Mm -hmm. So I'm sprinkling some soil just on top to cover the seeds. So we're just covering the seeds. Actually, for a, like when you do the 
the mustard seeds or the broccoli seeds, you don't even have to put soil on the top. Like, but we found that for the sunflower seeds, if it just, you know, it, they, they come better if you just add a tiny bit of uh, soil on top, just a, like a couple of, uh, like not, not even two millimeters, just a millimeter of soil on the top. And then uh, it's, we already watered this, uh, this soil, but this is a good time to water it and then uh, leave this aside. Uh, we put this on a heating uh, mat and uh, it will start to sprout in like two or three days. Do we have water? Yeah, the water, I, I brought the water in here. Should we? So we can just uh, pour some, oh, oops, sorry. Do we have a mat? So we'll keep this aside and this will, you'll see the, the, the sprouts out of this, like the, the microgreen starting in like uh, two or three days. Mm -hmm. So that's for the uh, that's for the sunflower seeds, right? Like for for to grow. Uh, uh, so the, here we have an aluminium tray, uh, uh, just a baking tray, and we are using this. This already filled with soil. Show, sure, can you sprinkle some mustard seeds? So again, you can see we have some mustard seeds here, and and as you can see, they're so tiny. And we are just going to. So these are actually the mustard seeds that we um, uh, use in the kitchen. Like uh, in Indian cooking, there is a lot of usage of the, the mustard seeds and you can use them to grow the microgreens. So if you go to a grocery store and you find these black mustard seeds, you could, you could just use them to grow microgreens. So for this, uh, you don't even need to add any soil on the top. Like you could just press it down, press the seeds down. And then just water it a little bit. Yeah, we, we, we put the seeds in a way that there is not much gaps. Like, uh, so then you'll have a lush tray, like. Okay, so this is, this tray is ready. So we'll do like the other ones, very similar to it. Like uh, we can grow uh, the peas and uh, yeah. So you get the idea, right? Like, so just, so, Basically, the soil, the trays, and um, uh, seeding, uh, what lights to use, and uh, what, um, how to get started. Like, you know, we, we covered uh, many things. Like, do you guys have any questions? Like, do you find it helpful? <laughs> Priya says, yes, subscribe today and binge watching. <laughs> Okay. So let us know, like, you know, how you find it. Uh, Carol, like, uh, Carol, see, you seem to have nice ideas. Like, you know, we would love to see your plans, uh, how you uh, built using the wood, right? The, the three tire system. Natalie, glad you found this helpful. Yeah. So we so, can't wait to see your uh, uh, your creations, like you, how, uh, uh, what kind of uh, microgreens are you're growing. Join the Gift of Health uh, Total Wellness Group. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a Facebook group as well, where you can actually share uh, and you can learn from others, like surround yourselves from, with people that are like-minded, uh, like just like you, who are on a similar journey, to wellness and health. Uh, that's uh, that's a place, yeah. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> so nice to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. So Debbie, like we just covered how to, how to grow your own microgreens. So do check it out. 
So where is the best place to buy uh, seeds? It's called the seed uh, hyphen bank.ca. Uh, you can find some there. Um, <laughs> Geraldine says, uh, Shobha, your hair looks so beautiful and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So yeah. how long or how tall do you leave the greens in the tray? Usually we harvest them around day seven to day 10. Mm -hmm. So as we share it, like this one, all these trays like here. They're ready to be harvested. Yeah, these are ready yeah. to be harvested. Yeah. These are eight days old. Yeah. These are mustard greens. Mm -hmm. These are eight days old. Um, these are ready to be harvested. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are uh, uh, sunflower microgreens. These are eight days old. These are ready to be harvested. Those are pea shoots. These are yeah. ready to be harvested. Yeah. So uh, I would say six to seven days is a good time, Debbie, where you can uh, harvest them. So one thing what we, what we do is basically what happens is, uh, uh, especially with sunflower microbes. Yes, so we do want to let you know, I, I am glad you asked this question. So as you can see in the sunflower, when you harvest between five to seven days, uh, it's, it's a good uh, thing. Yeah, here, can you see like in between those, the two starter leaves, there is there are extra leaves that are coming in the middle. You want to harvest the sunflower microgreens before or right when these leaves are starting. Usually they start around like day six or day seven, because if they already started, what we do, we actually pluck the middle leaves. You see, I, I pluck the middle leaves because the middle leaves are a bit bitter. The starting leaves, they taste good. So like uh, this one, like if I, this one doesn't have much of a middle leaves. Whereas uh, this one, if you see, do you see the middle leaves are much a little bit bigger? So if you eat this, this may be a little bit bitter. So you could just pluck this middle leaves and then this tastes fine. So this is just a one, one tip uh, regarding the sunflower microgreens. So you wanna harvest them before those middle leaves come. What we, what we do is like, from today onwards, we don't keep them under lights anymore because if you keep them under lights, they grow faster. So we just leave them in the windowsill, like right next to the sunlight or something. Yeah, so I would say after five to seven days, you can just uh, take them away from lights and just, just put on your windowsill. Uh, and the other thing is, Shobha, like, you know, how long is uh, sunflower microgreens, they stay in the fridge? Like, let's yeah. say you harvest all of them mm -hmm. and you, you don't finish them that day or the next day, they will stay in the fridge for like week to 10 days or even longer. Yeah. Yeah. How often do we water? Um, so if it's a Every if it's an if it's an aluminium tray like this, if it's an aluminium tray, uh, depending upon how moist it is, like if it is sometimes like like I check it every day. If it is moist enough, then I I don't water it that day. It you just go by how moist it is and also when they are placed under lights they dry faster so you do want to check uh, and you want to make sure that they are not dried totally yeah and so a tray a tray like this how often do we water like once we put water here can you lift this up lift the white part up no yeah so yeah so the, we put the water here the green area if, if you could just hold it for a second like mm -hmm. this yeah so we put the water here in this green tray. And then you can, can you see that like there are, there are roots underneath, they will suck the water that they need. And uh, this kind of uh, uh, watering tray, if you put the water in the, uh, in the uh, green thing, usually two to three days. Two to three days is, uh, is uh, how like the, that, uh, a water holding container will take. Yeah, Carol, like those kind of water uh, trays, they do, um, the, the green trays, they do make life easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you harvest your greens, do you cut them or pull them out? You cut them, you don't pull them out. See, if you pull them out, Maureen, like you're going to get the roots, you're going to get the soil and all, right? Like we don't want the soil. So we just cut it. Like um, we take a scissors, like here, what we do, so this is ready to be harvested. Oh, shall I get the no, scissors? It's okay. No, so, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so, so I know we don't have the scissors, right? But usually like we cut 
uh, I'm just showing. Uh, so we we just cut about the soil. So you can see. So we we start from this end and we take scissors and we just cut it. Yeah. And then like we don't we don't we don't pluck them. Like as as you can see this white part. So you so you can just place your scissors and and cut this so that you're not touching the soil. Yeah. yeah. So there is a question. Can you freeze them after you harvest? I don't see why not, Debbie. But the thing is. Uh, in our house, we are uh, we don't <laughs> have to freeze goes, them. Yeah, it goes faster. Yeah, like so because they're good in the fridge for a week or so. And if you're not finishing them off, then you're you're probably not eating uh, like you know so healthy. So you just got to finish them. <laughs> 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 tell Debbie, tell, uh, tell, tell Paul, Paul that you, he, you guys have to finish them. <laughs> you don't freeze the microgreens. Papa said you got to finish them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you can you can freeze them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Do we reuse the soil? Um, not so, not much. Like uh, we basically uh, put the soil in the in in the compost bin, and then they will just recycle. Uh, okay. Do you dispose of the soil after crop is harvested to use it again? So again, that Natalie, we we just add that soil, like whatever the soil that we use, we add it to the compost bin. What we found is. When we are using the same soil again, when we are putting uh, the seeds for the second time, they're not growing as well as they did for the first time. So that's that's one thing that we notice. So that's why what we do is we just use it for one time and uh, we just put this in the compost. We put the soil in the compost and use the fresh potting mix and uh, replant the seeds again. Yeah. So what's the best way to store them in the fridge? Uh, in the in the regular fridge. Yeah. Right? So you know, you just put them in a, a airtight container and then put them in the fridge. Yeah. Good. Well, uh, keep watching and um, you know, keep growing. Like we mm -hmm. would love to see what what you guys uh, grow, and um, we will uh, we will see you. Yeah. Hope uh, this gave you some ideas, like mm -hmm. how you can grow microgreens at home. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we would love to see you grow and uh, uh, share with us. So you can share in the Gift of Health Total Wellness group. Uh, and we would love to see. Yeah. And um, we have exciting sessions coming up. Like next week, we're going to be looking at, we'll be sharing some of the, uh, the strategies and the, the tips that we follow on a daily basis to. Um, how to cope with the, with stress like you know stress is so um uh, prevalent like it is it is there as a as a part of our lives and we found that uh when we use uh, some uh, uh, meditation processes and like breathing techniques uh, we it's very easy to handle our stress like cope with stress you can almost live like you know yes even if the stress is there it's it's uh, you know how to deal with it so that's the kind of uh uh, strategies that we follow on a daily basis and we'll be sharing with you yeah. uh, so next week. We want to give you that experience of uh, meditation. So since we will be doing what we thought is uh, rather than having it on live, what uh, we are planning is to have it in the Zoom session where uh, it will be easy for you to experience the meditation and experience the process. So that's why next week we are doing a little bit different. So we will send you the Zoom link to register. So you all can register and we will be in the Zoom room, which will not be uh, in the live. So, yeah, so, so, so there, won't of... be, there won't be a live on Facebook next week, but you could still you know, uh, be with us and we, we would love to see you uh, in in that session uh, where like we're interacting with each other and we are sharing and doing things together in a in a more in a in a close uh, setting so that's why we we're gonna yeah. do a zoom room so we'll share the link for that uh, zoom um, yeah. meeting uh, in the coming week mm -hmm. look out for that uh, we do have a, a, a full three-day uh, workshop on um, how to manage your uh, stress and you know how to have more energy that we are doing on uh, February 18th, 19th and 20th. Uh, like uh, this is one program where we found that it 
just uh, doing a, a few minutes of uh, breathing exercises and meditation every day, it has transformed our, uh, uh, our lives. Like uh, as some of you have commented, like, you know, you guys are so busy and how do you do all what you do? That's um, you know, thanks to uh, our uh, plant-based eating, thanks to uh, staying active, uh, doing regular exercise and thanks to the breathing and meditation practices that we do. So we're gonna, uh, and we got benefited so much, we became the teachers, uh, of Art of Living teachers to teach that. So that's coming on February 18th, 19th and 20th. It's a three days, just three hours a day. Yeah, and, and we teach as a part of a volunteer. So we don't get paid for teaching this course. So and so we, we are volunteer teachers like yeah. to, to, yeah, Beth says it's amazing. Beth just did the, the, the breathing and meditation program, the last one that we did. Debbie, uh, from your son and Debbie, we love, <laughs> <laughs> we love you too, Debbie yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Paul. I yeah. Paul. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we can't wait to see you uh, next week and inside the gift of health programs, uh, keep shining. And, uh, you know, we love to, we love to uh, see you healthy and happy. <laughs> okay. So, so we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank Bye -bye, you. Bye so everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Colin says, so sign, sign up. This course has many benefits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carol, so glad, Carol. Like, oh, we are so glad that, you know, we, our paths uh, crossed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Excellent. Okay. So okay, thank bye -bye. you. Have a wonderful night.